Nightly News with Lester Holt. Listen to this. Good evening. Today, some tough medicine for an American economy wracked by high inflation. The Federal Reserve raising a key interest rate three quarters of a percent. It's the biggest bump up since 1994. Oh a hike sure God. to be felt in the wallets of American borrowers. Think higher mortgage rates and bigger credit card payments, which we'll get into in just a moment. What's it all about? Well, the Fed hopes the increase will start putting the brakes on inflation, which is running at 40 year highs. Gas, food, prices, you name it, it's all soaring. Investors like the news today. The market's rallying on the Fed announcement. Policymakers weighing future increases while trying to steer around the risk of a recession. Let's tell you what you need to know about all this, starting with Tom Costello. For days, the Fed has telegraphed that it would go big today after acknowledging it should have acted sooner to rein in inflation. Today's three-quarter point rate hike is on top of two smaller hikes earlier this year. We at the Fed understand the hardship that high inflation is causing. We're strongly committed to bringing inflation back down. By raising rates and the cost of borrowing from mortgages and car loans to big business loans, the Fed hopes to cool the economy without pushing it into recession. Inflation now running at 8.6 percent, the highest since 1981, and Americans are getting squeezed. To make ends meet, Louisiana special ed teacher and single mom Christina Seal is now selling her plasma to earn an extra $600 a month. It's something that I have to to do in order to keep my family. People are selling their blood. To make sure that there is enough food to go around and the lights are on and I've got gas in my gas tank. Christina says her monthly bills have nearly doubled. A tank of gas from $40 to $90 a week. Utility bills from $180 to $300. Groceries from $150 to $300 a week. Now she's turning to a local food bank for help. Things just kept going up, inflation kept going up, 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 until my credit card was eventually maxed out. Cereal, peanut butter. At the Loaves and Fishes Food Pantry in Los Angeles, Brenda Hakimian says she no longer feels a part of the middle class. There's either extreme rich or extreme poor, and the rest of us just kind of fall through the cracks. Meanwhile, with nearly every American watching more of their paychecks sucked into their gas tank, the national average now 5.01 a gallon, President Biden today accused U.S. oil companies of profiting off the pain at the pump, with oil refining capacity down 3 million barrels a day since 2020. In a letter to seven oil CEOs, Mr. Biden writes, at a time of war, refinery profit margins well above normal being passed directly onto American families are not acceptable. But the oil industry believes the Biden White House has been hostile as it tries to go green. Six refineries have gone offline, many in need of overhaul to meet environmental standards. The oil industry says U.S. refineries today are running at or near capacity to meet meet demand, but still demand is outpacing supply. And Tom, continuing supply chain problems I know are one of several factors the Fed says is driving this inflation. Yeah, absolutely. And the COVID lockdowns in China not helping the supply chain. They're also watching the war in Ukraine, driving up prices and consumer demand. And they expect they will raise rates again in July, maybe by another three quarters of a point. This will continue through the year. And unemployment likely to rise from historic lows to maybe even above 4% sometime in 2024, Lester. All right, Tom Costello, thank you. Those rising interest rates, as you heard, will likely send mortgage and other rates even higher in coming weeks, pushing some people people to buy now for fear of paying more later. Jolene Kent reports in our series, Priced Out. I'm so glad that we found these. Sky Callahan was in a rush. So financially overall, it's been a little bit of a struggle. We had to either buy before the rates went up or completely wait. With a growing family, she needed a bigger house. Calculating what the New Jersey family could afford depended on interest rates, which have surged. A 30-year fixed rate mortgage climbing from 3.3% at the start of this year to 6.22% now. Home prices have been soaring too. Median sale prices have skyrocketed 
skyrocketed 16% in the past year. The combination can mean as much as a $1,000 increase in monthly payments for families like the Callahans, a trend pushing some to act in a hurry. When we saw that the rates were going up due to inflation, that's when we really uh, got into gear and decided to, okay, we need to make a move now because it's only going to get worse. That feeling Callahan was getting is called inflationary psychology, and many Americans say they've got it too, beyond the housing market. Nearly 90% of Americans are concerned about inflation, and more than a third of shoppers said they have purchased something recently for fear that the price would continue to rise. It's a rationale that we need to stockpile things before the price increases, which just creates a self-fulfilling prophecy as we spend more, we feel like we have less money, we blame it on inflation, when maybe it's actually our psychology. Inflationary psychology can impact the way we spend money on everything from houses to swimsuits to baby formula, triggering even more stress and anxiety. I feel pressured to buy now as opposed to waiting a few months because who knows what the prices are going to be then. If you're going after a big ticket item that you really need, say a house, should you be approaching this in a certain way? Yeah, you know, honestly, we won't see a dramatic drop in prices after inflation stabilizes. Maybe it's time to say, instead of buying this year, maybe I can rent somewhere affordable and wait till I have more savings to buy those big ticket items. Big ticket items whose costs seem to just keep going up. Jolene Kent, NBC News. It does of course, it's not just soaring home prices and mortgage rates. So many factors are combining into an economic picture painful for many Americans. High gas prices are contributing to the 8.6% inflation rate that shoppers are all too familiar with. Markets are down substantially. The Dow has dropped more than 16% since the start of the year, though closing up today, as we noted earlier. Meantime, household debt is rising, setting a new record this year at nearly 16% trillion dollars and credit card debt that's up reaching 841 billion dollars with rates expected to go up joining me now is cnbc senior personal finance correspondent sharon epperson sharon what are you telling people they can do right now Lester, the first thing to do is don't panic. Panic is not a strategy. Focus on what you can control. With your spending, pay down credit card and other high interest debt. By some estimates, card rates will be close to 19% by the end of the year. So you want to try to move that debt to a lower rate by switching to an interest-free balance transfer card. To boost savings, look at your subscriptions. One study says Americans spend about $133 more than they think they do on monthly subscriptions. So you want to try to cut at least one of those expenses as a way to save or put that money toward covering the rising prices of what you need every day like food and gas and when it comes to investing stay focused on your long-term goals if you have a workplace retirement plan a 401k or other type of plan you are consistently putting in a set amount of money each pay period so when markets are down those dollars are buying more shares and when markets recover you've put that money to work toward what eventually could be significant growth Lester a lot to talk about around the kitchen table Absolutely. tonight. Sharon Epperson, good to see you. Thank you. Good to be here. Tonight's other top story, more severe weather threatening parts of the upper Midwest with 36 million at risk to tornadoes already reported tonight in Wisconsin. Also this evening, 100 million people still in the grip of a dangerous heat wave in much of the Midwest and the Southeast. All of it as a state of emergency is in effect in Montana after that catastrophic flooding in Yellowstone National Park. Miguel Almaguer is there for us tonight. Whoa, this was the harrowing escape out of Yellowstone as boulders tumble down mountains and a home washed into a river floating nearly five miles downstream. We have no warning. They're just like, get in, get in, get in. For Nicole O'Shea and nearly a hundred other people cut off by dangerous, fast-rising floodwaters, these helicopter rides were their only chance for rescue. It landed and it was, it was, I'm getting goosebumps just talking about it. It was so emotional because <clears throat> None of us were expecting it. Across large swaths of Montana, historic flooding washed away roads and submerged them under feet of water. The water started rolling in the back, broke out a basement window, started filling up my basement, and then I quit. Holy! 
uneven bridges with their mangled tassels floated downstream, ripped apart by raging currents. It was frightening because in addition to all of this debris, you can hear the rocks in the creek. These are giant boulders. A state of emergency as roads into Yellowstone National Park remain closed indefinitely at the start of the peak summer season. It's safe to say that it's going to be an extended period of time. The northern end will be closed. With 10,000 people evacuated from the nation's oldest national park, this is the first time flooding has ever closed it. And in the afternoon, it started rising even more, and we had to move everything to high ground. The deluge, fueled by an atmospheric river or stream of moisture, pounding the region with inches of rain. And it wasn't just rain, but snowmelt that filled these rivers. One of them rising six feet in just 24 hours. So much water, it toppled into nearby communities below. The water just now beginning to recede. Tonight, historic flooding and unprecedented damage at one of our nation's most stunning national parks. Mother Nature's beauty now suffering from its wrath. Miguel, let's circle back if we can to Yellowstone. We're hearing closures could really impact families and businesses this summer. That's right, Lester. The park is closed indefinitely. The roads leading into the park could be closed for weeks or even months. That would be devastating for the summer season and all the families headed in this direction. Meantime, in Billings, three hours from here, the water treatment plant could soon be flooded. If it is, the city would lose clean drinking water. Lester? A dramatic backdrop, Miguel. Thank you. The January 6th committee holds its third public hearing tomorrow. And tonight, the committee wants information from a Republican congressman about a... Tw my God, I just can't believe that all this is going on just within a matter of days up in that area towards people. People basically uh, found it. The deluge fueled by an atmospheric river or stream of moisture pounding the region with inches of rain. And it wasn't just rain, but snow melt that filled these rivers. One of them... In other words, it said inches. In other words, it really didn't say how many inches. But I, I personally believe that the, the, the most damage is because of the sudden uh, temperatures rising that is causing the snow melt that is causing this damage. And a combination of the two... Has, has been catastrophic. It's just so sad. Then rising six feet in just 24 hours. So much water, it toppled into nearby communities below. The water just now beginning to recede. Tonight, historic flooding and unprecedented damage at one of our nation's most stunning national parks. Mother Nature's beauty now suffering from its wrath. Miguel, let's circle back if we can to Yellowstone. We're hearing closures could really impact families and businesses this summer. That's right, Lester. The park is closed indefinitely. The roads leading into the park could be closed for weeks or even months. That would be devastating for the summer season and all the families headed in this direction. Meantime, in Billings, three hours from here, the water treatment plant could soon be flooded. If it is, the city would lose clean drinking water. Lester? A dramatic backdrop, Miguel. Thank you. The January 6th committee holds its third public hearing tomorrow. That's scary. That's scary. This is scary. We're definitely at the end. In more dollars in military aid to you. And add insult to misery, we got this going on. Wow. TED.com. The U.S. is sending a billion more dollars in military aid to Ukraine, including anti-ship missiles, launchers, rocket, artillery, and howitzers. President Biden made the announcement today after a call with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. It comes as Russia makes advances in the east against outgunned Ukraine forces. Major new development involving the suspected gunman accused of killing 10 people in a racist attack at a Buffalo supermarket last month. The Justice Department today charging him with 
26 counts of federal hate crimes and weapons violations. Some of the new charges could carry the death penalty. John Hinckley Jr., who shot and wounded former President Ronald Reagan, was freed from court oversight today, ending decades of supervision by legal authorities and mental health professionals. Acquitted by reason of insanity, Hinckley spent years in a mental hospital and has lived in Virginia since 2016. Up next, a major announcement on vaccines for kids and will the end of COVID testing bring on a surge of summer travel overseas? Trading isn't just a hobby. It's your future. Wow. Good luck to all of us as we end our program by telling people thank you for your prayers. We're praying for you. We're definitely at the end. May God have mercy on us all and good luck to us all. God bless America. God bless our American troops. And shalom.